Hello everyone, as we are experiencing many new next-generation AI video models released recently, lots of companies have launched their AI video generators that use better ways to generate more realistic and more stable objects, training a better AI model that understanding more about the real world. For example, we have Kling AI and Luma AI, and we just got news from Runway ML that the Gen 3 AI video models are officially launching for every user, the only thing is that Runway Gen 3 is only available for text to videos. So, I believe they can do image to videos without any problems, it's just a matter of time. They want to gradually launch some features over time, just like what we experienced with the iPhone, and yeah, it will be happening soon. So, what I did in this workflow, and why do I create this? Well, for AI video short story or even a movie creation process. For example, once we have the content from ChatGPT or any large language model, then we can generate images for each scenes. In AI video, we can say this is the initial key frame of the scenes. Because once we have the desired image of how it look and feel, we can bring it to AI video generator using image to video processing. So to speed up the process from natural language contents and transform to stable diffusion text prompt. This is what I did for the short story video, so let's check out the Comfy UI workflow. In previous videos, I have talked about IF AI tools, which connect LLM in Comfy UI and work with Stable Diffusion to generate some images or videos. In my case, I am using Elama 3 fine tuned SD prompt large language models. These models transform the storyline from natural language sentences and create text prompts for image generation in Stable Diffusion, like this one. So everything will be packed into a text prompt format that Stable Diffusion or any AI image diffusion model can understand. We can choose whatever checkpoint models we want to use and run those here. Someone suggested in our Discord group to use the Cinema X Alpha SDXL Cinema Checkpoint models to generate scenes for AI storytelling movies or short films, or we can call them short stories. This approach is getting pretty good results. Let's try out this one. First of all, we are going to see what we can generate from text files. For example, I have text files here with all the scenes and voiceover. It's very easy and simple to generate this kind of content using ChatGPT or any other large language models. Once we have each scene, we bring it to the IF prompt to prompt custom nodes. Then we set the scene descriptions here. Of course, sometimes we have to tweak a little bit. For example, we need to specify what kind of outfit it is because large language models like ChatGPT don't describe in detail what kind of outfit the characters are wearing. They just briefly describe the motions at that moment, like stealthily moving across the rooftop like a ninja. So I have to predefine some text such as it's nighttime, Japanese outfit, ancient Japanese outfit, etc. Then I can paste the motion descriptions here and it will generate something like this. We can bring that to the other groups here, which is the text to videos. I have the IP adapter for face ID, which generates a more natural face for the character this way. If you have specific scene movements you want to reference from other movies or videos you saw like this one with Japanese SWAT fighting warriors, you can use control net to generate very specific actions in these scenes. For instance, if you have a capture from a movie showing how people are standing in certain positions, you can reference that. Using ControlNet, you can easily generate the current actions in those scenes as starting keyframes. Whether you want to do it in Luma AI, Kling AI, or Runway ML, if image to videos is enabled, you can use this starting image as a keyframe to generate the video scenes. Here, we have seed number sharing, we have the case sampler, and I have played around with that. So far, it works for me with these sampler settings. If you are using text to image here, then you will set it to 1.0. I was testing without using the empty latent image instead of using image to image at the last part here. So that will be something different you have to set. In the second group here, we have another detailer sampler. Right here, we have the face detailer custom nodes from the impact pack. Actually, I'm not using that for doing the face detailing, it's just the name of these custom nodes. But actually, we can use the ultralytics detector provider to choose whatever you want to do, segmentations, and refine the detailer of that part. 
For example, if I have a hand uh, or a person, or just go back to the face as the original face detailer nature, we can do that as well. I usually use the person here because I want to refine the whole person overall. We don't have to refine too much, so I will set the threshold in the beatbox to 0.3. That is the normal procedure for what I usually use for these detailer nodes. And yeah, basically, you can twist and test with different settings. For example, the denoise. You don't want to do too much difference with your previous group. You can use 0.35, so it will look almost similar to the previously generated image in the first sampler group. Then lastly, we have the face swap node. That is optional if you want to use it. By default, I turn it off. Because I use face ID in the beginning of the workflow. It's just another option for face swapping, but I usually turn it off. And then lastly, we go to the upscaling. Or maybe in between sampling group, you can do a latent upscale to make it better before the final upscale. If you want to make high quality video scenes, then of course turn on the upscaling. Lastly, on the top, this is the load image for the character. I just usually use the face of the character. Sometimes, you know, you have your male character as the face of a ninja. Then you can apply this one and it will start to generate the result here a ninja face using this character's face. So it's very self-explanatory and very simple. Lastly, I got a save image extend. This is something I used recently for saving images. I don't want to save too much metadata in the files, making the size large and adding some junk data that we don't necessarily need. So I turned it off by default. Saving the image by using ComfyUI save image duplicates a lot of metadata and unnecessary data into the files. So I use this one. And yeah, we can try one scene like the stories that I have and we can see how it works. So once you click the Q prompt in ComfyUI, it will first start to generate from the large language models. Based on the natural language that I type, it will generate the text prompt for stable diffusion. Right here we have the response text data that will be passing those data. The strength, the data strength to this custom note displays the text so you can clearly see what is going on in the response from the large language models. Then we can combine this text using the text concrete combining text A, B, and C. So why am I doing this? What happened to the, what was the purpose of text A and B? That is something I want to define before the pretext text prompt. For example, some styles that we always need for our AI image, like cinematic, hard shadow, photorealism, ultra realistic, you know, and the themes of the image. For example, here, we are using ancient Japanese themes. Then this is always going to be hard-coded into our text prompt that is going to be generated. So let's say we got this one in here. And then the next one is going to be the character styles. The character styles are going to be placed into text B. Right here, we have, as I stated in the notes, the idea of systematically storing character styles in a database. That will be something if we put that for any app or system that supports connecting and integrating this comfy UI workflow together with a system. It will work by replacing these custom notes and passing the strength from a database to this custom notes strength input. Then we can define, for example, body type, hair color, or, you know, the body shape, whether fat, skinny, or muscular. You want to define the character's body type and shape here. Then it will be combined into the text prompt as the result. For example, we have this. So this time we don't have any text prompt here. So we will leave it as empty. Let's say I have something like tall guy, black hair. So for example, like this one, let's generate one more time. It's pretty fast in this setup that I have to generate in large language models. Then pass that to here. As we can see, tall and black hair are appending this text from what I input here. Yeah, so these notes are, you know, if you are just using Comfy UI, you can bypass these note ideas. This is just for my brainstorm of integrating the system as a whole workflow into an app system that generates something automatically or systematically. So in the end, we have this image generated, and it looks pretty cool, like really Japanese anime styles. This time we have it right here, and I usually set two images here, so I got like A-B choice to choose from. And no, I'm not going to only stick with one choice, one tools, one method like some haters do. So, once we get some image results here, 
we will gather them in the output folder that will be dedicated to storing by the naming conventions using this format. Then we are all done using this one. Basically, step by step, each scene comes from the text that we have from ChatGPT or any large language models that you use. Then, you know, processing it, it will be a very tedious process. Just copy and paste the text in here. And we have to tweak it a little bit to let the large language models understand what we are talking about here. Yeah, but you can try it out. Eventually, you will understand what it will look like. But it's going to be very tedious work, like copying the text and pasting each line to generate. So that's why I came up with future ideas. Maybe we can integrate this Comfy UI workflow as a whole system with a database and a web UI or something like that to automatically loop over all the scenes from the chat GPT content and pass them one by one into the text input and the strength input defined already in the database of each character. And of course, you need a table to store this as well as the story backgrounds. We have maybe a table to store each story background. Then we can, you know, do a text prompt here, do a text input connecting with the database. So that is some future concept, maybe a future update concept of this workflow. If I have time to do that, then that is what it will become. So yes, that is it for this video. Coming up next, we are going to try this workflow with Runway Gen 3. Before finishing off, I have the output examples here that I can show you guys how it looks after I create all the scenes from the ninja story. I have spent all my life training to become the perfect warrior, mastering the ways of the ninja. But tonight, my skills will be put to the ultimate test. My orders are clear. I must eliminate the target at all costs. But as I take aim, a realization dawns on me. This is no ordinary mark. My father, the man who trained me, the man who taught me the ways of the warrior. How can I fulfill my mission and take his life? In this moment, I must choose between my loyalty to the clan and the love for my father. The life of an ancient warrior is a solitary one. But tonight, I face the ultimate test of my honor. My son, I know why you have come, but I also know the weight that rests upon your shoulders. The life of a ninja is one of sacrifice and honor. If it is my time to die, then let it be by the hand of my own son. Fulfill your duty, and know that I die with pride, for I have taught you well. In the end, the weight of my duty proved greater than the bond of family. I have done what I must, but the burden I now carry will forever haunt me. But in the end, I cannot bring myself to end it all. For the path of the warrior is one of resilience, not surrender. I will carry this burden, and in doing so, I will find a new purpose to honor my father's memory and to protect those I hold dear.